Hi. Um, now I know that you guys are being investigated as to who funds you, who supports you, and you've been major players in two protests in New York City, one in June and one in September, and they want to know where your money's coming from, but do you, they're not interested in where's the money coming from, and I think it's like 125 million for this mega mosque. Yeah, so where do you guys think that 125 million for the mosque is coming from? Um, well, that's the question. That's the question, isn't it? Uh, look, our funding comes from our readers. They donate to the site, Atlas Shrugs, Jihad Watch, $18, $20, $50, all over the world. That's why we buy these bus campaigns to help the apostates. We bought city by city. Otherwise, I would have rolled it out nationwide. Otherwise, I would have bought 2,000 buses, not 20. Uh, this is a deeply troubling question, to be honest with you. We know that, for example, he received funds, and this, was, this is all open source, World Economic Forum, he received from, from, from XNL. XNL was scheduled uh, to build a uh, convention center in Kissimmee, Florida, and the uh, project was killed. It was killed because NXL is uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's family and his company. And so the people in Florida, they came out against this project and it was killed. I would think that if a project in Kissimmee, Florida, a convention center could be killed, then certainly a, a 15, 16 story mega mosque at Ground Zero ought to be reconsidered as well. I mean, you may, want, you may have other thoughts. It's all conjecture. I think they're having problems with, with laundering the money. I think that's, what, that's why they, they, have, they have, what, $18,000? $18,000 in the bank account now. And you're talking of uh, anywhere between 125 and 150 million dollars. Um, they don't have it. Now they said, "I just want you to know, we're not going to take it from Iran or Hamas." Uh, just so that you know, you're not allowed to take money from Iran or Hamas. The State Department designated terrorist groups. You cannot take money from them. So what he's saying is, "I'm not going to break the law in front of your face." Um, you, you have to add anything? Well, the main thing is, is that it's a question, and nobody seems to care. And it's very interesting that you note it in, in terms of uh, our own financing because, yeah, we get uh, $18, $20, $100 donations on the websites and we, we get them from a lot of people because a lot of people support us and we uh, are able to get, spend $8,000 and buy a bus ad about uh, apostasy and the rights of the apostates, uh, the human rights of the apostates uh, that nobody seems to care about. And that's, you know, that's, that's small change, my friend. That's not big money. And then there's this hundred million dollars over here, and there's this waiter who suddenly becomes a multimillionaire, and nobody seems to know where the money's coming from, and nobody seems to care. And Nancy Pelosi said, we have to investigate the opponents of the mosque. And the next day, Politico called me asking about money. Uh, but he, I, I, he, I guarantee you, he did not call the Imam Raouf. One last thing, the waiter, who became a big mega developer uh, two years later, it wasn't even his money. He, the, the, the Hisham Elizante, right? Elzanati, thank you. Elzanati is the quiet partner in all this, and he, not once but twice, Medicaid for it to the tune of the last time in 2006, $336,000 he defrauded Medicaid. I don't know why uh, he didn't go to jail for that. Yeah. And also, uh, Imam Raouf, uh, I'm a, I don't know if you're aware of it, is a slumlord. Now, I didn't say that. I'm not defaming or smearing. This is the, the city, Union City, who's suing him, said he's a slumlord. He has these buildings, and the people are living in untold horror, the toilet water and, and rats and, and broken doors and no heating and no cooling. And by the way, he was given $2 million to make repairs to the slums. And still, the repairs have not been made. And now he's being sued to, where, where's that money? And why is the New York Times all over, like they're all over my $18 donations? I'm serious, they, there was an exchange just before I got here with the New York Times. Now, the $25 that went to um, Jihad Watch, uh, nobody's asking these questions. And I think it's deeply troubling that an imam, a man of the cloth, sort of, uh, would, be, would, would be a slumlord, wouldn't you? And that he would lie on his tax return saying that one of their, one of their residences, a one bedroom apartment in New York City was a mosque. And that five, over 500 people were worshiping there. Why would he do that? So that he could get tax exempt status. Yeah, 
True confessions. I, I did not come to this talk thinking I would agree with what you said. Um, and I do feel rather limited with, with what you just said about filibusters. I have no intention of filibuster. But I wonder if, if I have a chance to do anything beyond ask a question. Um, I, and so I'll try to frame this as a question given what you just said. Um, do you think that, that what you are presenting, a uh, couple of questions, do you think that what you're presenting is fostering mutual respect and understanding between uh, my ballpark estimates, 1.5 billion Christians and 1 billion Muslims worldwide? Um, and do you think that the manner in which you're characterizing, characterizing Islam and perhaps by, by virtue of mostly silence, you are characterizing Christianity um, is, is a fair characterization of the two given historical instances of slavery and genocide on, on several sides um, and given globalization impact on environment and, and worldwide poverty. Um, and Look, let's, let's, yeah, the, those let's, two questions. Well, first I just want to address yeah. your a very important point, and I thank you for bringing it up. Mutual respect and mutual understanding. I ask you, where is the reciprocity? I think that we're very respectful. I think that, frankly, that we're trading um, freedom for peace, in which case you'll get neither. But in the case of the mosque, where's the reciprocity? We are constantly accommodating this hypersensitivity in the Muslim world. And mutual respect and mutual understanding is a two-way street. And, and I don't see it. I don't see it. I do not mean to, uh, I, I, I don't believe we're responsible for this discord. I don't believe we're responsible for this disharmony. I lay this solely at the feet of the imam. What were we supposed to do? Just lay down and take it? Say nothing? Is that the answer? I traffic only in the facts. Uh, I'd like you to address his other question. But I think that's a very important point. Mutual respect is a two-way street. It's a two-way street. It has to go both ways. When it comes to the particulars, uh, I think that it's, the record is clear, you know, if there are these questions about the Imam and his uh, activities and his uh, inconsistent statements and so on, then uh, who's being disrespectful? Is it he or is it I, is it we who are calling attention to it? I don't think that it's in the least unreasonable or disrespectful to want to get answers and clarity about what his intentions really are and what he's up to. As far as the larger question that you asked about Islam, uh, that's a matter of record. And anybody can read the Quran, anybody can study the Sharia, Islamic law. You can look at the states where uh, Sharia is been, has been fully implemented, uh, where that's what they say that they're doing, where Saudi Arabia says there's no law in Saudi Arabia except what is Islamic law, and the Islamic Republic of Iran, as well as Sudan and uh, Somalia to a lesser degree in various areas. And if you look at them, there are various consistencies. There are various commonalities in the uh, laws that they implement. And if you look into the uh, various schools of Islamic jurisprudence, the Sunni schools, the Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanafi, and Hanbali schools, and the Shi'ite, Jafari school, if you look into the contents of their teaching, you, you will find a great commonality. Really, 75 or 80 percent of the laws are generally the same among the schools of jurisprudence, and they're the same kinds of laws that are implemented in Saudi Arabia and Iran. And they do not uh, accord with universally, ex otherwise universally accepted notions of human rights to the slightest degree. Uh, the the uh, execution, the stoning, there are eight, last I heard, I'm not sure this is an up-to-date count, it's about a year old, but there were eight women uh, on death row in Iran awaiting stoning to death for adultery. There were, uh, in Pakistan, there was a study done by a, actually an Islamic reform group, Sisters in Islam, that found that up to 70% of the women who were in prison in Pakistan, also an Islamic republic, although not fully Sharia compliant, were there because they were victims of rape. 
And under the Hadood laws, under the, 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 the ways in which cr crimes of zina, of sexual immorality, are understood, that made them guilty. Now, these things are not originated by me. These things are matters of record. They're unpleasant, yes. I think they should be opposed strenuously, yes. But I think they should be opposed strenuously because it's a matter of love for human beings. These things are not good for anybody. Muslim, non-Muslim, Zoroastrian, whatever you want. Now, when you say uh, there's some sort of, a, of an implied uh, comparison with Christianity, actually, I've made that comparison explicit. I wrote a book with the subtitle, Why Christianity Is and Islam is, Isn't, in question of, is it a religion of peace? All religions don't teach the same things. But that is not the same kind of question as what we're talking about in terms of behavior. Evil is not the property of any individual group, any particular group. Evil is universally distributed. Evil is within every human heart, along with the capacity to overcome it. The choice is yours in all the choices of your life, whether you're going to be good or evil. But every group, every religion, every political system, everything you can name, you can find somebody who's done evil in its name. But this doesn't really address the question of what we are to do about Islamic violence today. There's several reasons for that. One is there aren't armed groups of Jews or armed groups of Christians killing people and terrorizing people and justifying it according to Jewish texts and teachings or Christian texts and teachings in the world today. I'm talking today. Historically, you can find examples, certainly. But there are also reasons why you find them at various points in history and then they recede at other points in history. In Islam, the people who are committing the acts of violence make their appeal to peaceful Muslims precisely by selling themselves as being the exponents of pure and true Islam based on texts that are in the Quran and in the example of Muhammad in the Sunnah that have no parallel in Judaism or Christianity. Texts like where Muhammad says, I've been commanded to fight against people until they confess that there's no God but Allah and I am his prophet. Or texts like the, uh, the three thrice repeated in the Quran, slay the infidels wherever you find them, slay the pagans wherever you find them. That's at chapter 2, 80, chapter 2 verse 191, chapter 4, verse 89, and chapter 9, verse 5. And the uh, various other hadith where Muhammad prescribes conversion or subjugation or war, I felt that was kind of absurd that people uh, act like that's an egregious statement of mine because if it is, they have to condemn Muhammad too. He said it. I just quoted it. My name is Steve Richter. I live in Philadelphia. I have a two-part question for Ms. Geller. First off, just for clarification, you understand or you agree with the statement that they have the right to build the mosque there, the First Amendment right protects them, property rights, the zoning laws are being abided by? Absolutely. So then my second part of the question is, how close is too close or how far is far enough? Two blocks is too close, is it gotta be four blocks, not lower Manhattan, not in Manhattan? Where do, you, where do you find the line where to say it's not disrespectful to the memory of the folks who were killed on 9-11? Not there. That, but, that's, but then where? Anywhere, me, any, me, anywhere else, distance. anywhere else, not in a building that was destroyed on the largest Islamic attack on American soil that slaughtered 3,000 Americans who were going to work, having their lunch, but buying newspapers, left their house, left their husbands, left their wives, left their mothers, not in a building that was destroyed in an attack that sought to take down this country, sir, sought to take down this country. It hit the financial epicenter. It hit the, poli the political epicenter. If it weren't for the heroes on the plane, it would have been the capital of the White House, and it hit the Pentagon. So I say, not there. Where is there, then? What Any anywhere else. Three blocks away? Four blocks away? That's OK. You got it. Can you make that deal? I'll, I'll, I'll back you up all the way. That's my thinking. That building was, listen, uh, he said, even though it was scrubbed from the New York Times website, in the first article that was written on the Ground Zero Mega Mosque in December of 2009, Imam Raouf said, New York City is the capital of the world, and that building is iconic of 9 11. And when, when you said 77% of Americans. Se uh, close to 70. Close to, well, I want to get the number right. What, what's the number of people in Manhattan against it? People Actually, the majority, I want to say something. It, the majority of people in Manhattan are against it, but 
I don't think that's really um, indicative of anything but, but uh, maybe, uh, you know, being demographic about it. And what I mean by that is, would you consider um, Pearl Harbor a Hawaiian issue? That's why I don't think, I mean, it's an interesting question, and the majority of New Yorkers are against it, but I, yes, it's true, it's, it's not as large as 60% or 70%, I agree, but the majority of New Yorkers are against it, but I think it's, it's an irrelevant question. This was an, an attack on America. It was not an attack on, on, on you know, uh, Kenta Fitzgerald. I guess we just fundamentally disagree on you know, the right to bail something there. It's not the people from Al Qaeda, it's not the criminals that perpetrated the crime on 9 11. It's a different group, and I think it tends to be a very broad brush and getting a very different yes, picture. Yes. The question is, uh, it's a different group, but how exactly do their belief systems differ? Uh, it's never been established that the Imam Ra'uf rejects the Islam of Osama bin Laden in any particular except tactically. But there's plenty of ways to get there if you're going to the same goal. And if you have the same goal, but you want to get there by a different road, I'm sorry, that's, not a, that's a distinction without a difference. And if the Imam Ra'uf is in favor of Islamic law, of Sharia, in its most draconian forms, then, and as seems to be abundantly established from his advocacy for the Sharia Compliance Index, which has states like Saudi Arabia and Iran at the top as a positive good. And then when he is calling for Sharia in the United States, then look, the goal of Al-Qaeda is to impose Sharia over the West. So the Imam Rauf wants to do it by going on television and making you all think that you're standing for the good when you're defending him. And Osama bin Laden does it by flying planes into buildings. But they're both working for the same thing. Um, I, I appreciate you uh, conceding at the at the get-go that uh, it isn't an issue of constitutional right or... Uh, I didn't concede it. I never thought it was. Okay, well, you, you prefacing your I never, statement. I never, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the argument you, you initially offered was um, uh, one of compassion for the families who, who died in the towers, um, which is why the proximity is, is so important to you. you know, two blocks is not, an, is, is not okay, three blocks is. Um, it's not two blocks, it is ground zero. Do you think that the terrorists knew, the Muslim terrorists, when they were flying the planes into buildings, do you think they knew that the planes were going to go down invertedly, the buildings were going to go down invertedly, and not destroy lower Manhattan? H how could they know that? That building was part of the attack. I, I, it needs to be clarified. The 600 so, feet is, is, is dishonest. Um, so three blocks is not okay? That wasn't my question, but um, I, I think it, I, I would like to echo his question and, and say, so three blocks is not okay. If, if not, then, then how far are you? Is it? Are you willfully missing the point? Are, um, you, are you intentionally missing the point? So my, we my have real consistently is, been is, saying is, that your, this your building is part of the attack the site. Compassion, if you move the, the thing away from the attack site, then that's okay. But this building is part of the attack site. We're not saying two blocks is no good, but three blocks is okay. That's the, that's the point here, that it's part of the attack site. That's why that building is important to Rauf. He himself said it, and so did Daisy Khan. So I guess my question... It was, divine, it was a divine hand that brought that building to them. So that's the Washington Post. The video is on my site. So, uh, so the, the initial argument you proposed against the mosque was uh, one of comp out of compassion for the families who were killed uh, in the building. America. This is what you said, um, of the right. families of the people who were killed. They, they, and they, America. We're they all 9-11 families. Every single one of us in this room is a 9-11 family. They just took the hit for us. So I guess my, my question is, um, by opposing the mosque, are you not in part uh, being not compassionate to the, the Muslim individuals and their families who were killed, who were, worked in the towers? Because after all, there was a mosque in the South Tower. So are you not, uh, not being compassionate to those families? Uh, so you're saying it's only a one-way street? Are you, say, are you saying it's only a one-way street? You say, yeah. Are you saying it's only? Saying? Yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what you're Th saying. That's what you're saying. Yes. yes. You know, the, it's interesting to note that uh, there were about 3,000 people who were killed in the Twin Towers. And uh, if you look at the actual lists, there are about 28 or 30 
who uh, seem to be have have Muslim names, you know, names like Muhammad or Abdullah or uh, various others. And now this has been wildly inflated as part of the propaganda to sell this mosque to the American people, uh, such that uh, the, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, the Hamas-linked Muslim Brotherhood Front, has been uh, saying 300 people, uh, 300 Muslims, uh, which is sort of preposterous to start with, to think that a tenth of the people who are working in the World Trade Center were Muslim. It just strains credulity. And now I saw on your flyer, the defamatory flyer, that was being handed out, 400, and pretty soon it's going to be uh, 2,000, 2,500, everybody in there was Muslim. The fact is, look, there were a lot of non-Muslims who were killed on 9-11. On Let's not forget that either. And so if you're going to build a monument to them, if you're going to do it out of compassion, then build a church, a synagogue, a Hindu temple, I'm sure there were Hindus killed um, in, the, in the towers on 9-11, and, and a mosque, and have them all together. The problem here is not about sensitivity or religious freedom. Uh, they're already praying in the Burlington Coat Factory, but the Burlington Coat Factory is not a 16-story triumph, uh, a monument of triumph. And uh, the, to, to act as if it would be compassionate to this tiny minority of victims of these attacks, that we have to put this victory mosque here, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, then we should just tally up the religious uh, affiliations of the various victims and build buildings accordingly, all ringing around the World Trade Center. It's absurd.